prediction of sorts, uh, I think our next strike is going to be a, is a healthcare strike, um, possibly, right? Uh, because I think right now, uh, healthcare workers, um, they like they're on the they're on the the front of the front lines of dealing with uh, or or getting ready to deal with all this if they have to deal with all this, right? Like we don't have like this is a highly communicable disease. We don't have specific places um, to. We don't have like specific places to to treat um, or test this disease. We just we just don't. So we can't put them in um, tents or just like integrate them into the hospital system as is, uh, because that's foolish. Why would you do that? There's other people that are immunocompromised in these hospitals, and if that's who that if that and that's who that upper respiratory disease hits. Why would you put them in the same fucking vicinity of each other? Doesn't make any sense. Um, it's illogical. So the question that we have to ask is, what happens if the healthcare workers in America get sick? Are they protected? Are we prepared to take care of them as well uh, if they get sick? In this pandemic, like what happens in that? What are, what are the what are the provisions that we have put in? We don't we don't have any. That's the simple answer to it, is we don't have any provisions put into place for any of this stuff. And if they go on strike, if healthcare workers in America go on strike, if there's a healthcare strike in America next, um. I mean, this could be the levy for dedicated spaces to test and and treat this the the virus, patients of the virus. You know that that can, that that would probably be the first thing that they ask for is uh, specific places, making sure we have equipment. Um, this and it could also be a a, a way to leverage Medicare for all in this situation. Uh, because here's the thing, if, if doctors, nurses, uh, techs, and any sort of healthcare professional get on board with the idea, I think it would gain some extra strength for Medicare for all, for universal healthcare, which is so fucking needed right now um, in, our, in our society. We, we have people that do have health, health insurance that still can't afford to go take this test. And, you know, again, it doesn't even matter. Like, it, it, even if you can, even if you can't afford to take the test, if, if you have to be furloughed for two weeks, there's a good chance that your company, your corporation is not going to help you fucking pay for it, right? That slush fund that they got is not being reallocated to help the workers. It's going to fucking, you know, pad the ass of a fucking rich person is all it's doing. So the healthcare strike, if that comes next, um, it wouldn't just be doctors and nurses, right? Like that's kind of what we think that the healthcare system is, that it's only doctors and workers. Like it's far more than that. Uh, it's it's techs, it's clerks, it's environmental staff, it's administrative staff. There's a lot of janitorial staff. Like that's a lot of people that work in the healthcare industry or or in the periphery of the healthcare industry, right? Like so. So, and most of these people that aren't doctors or nurses make like $25,000 a year or less usually. Um, so, you know, these are, again, these are like low to maybe min, middle income kind of people, maybe. Um, I've made $25,000 a year and I can tell you that it's fucking not a lot. <laughs> like, like I made 25 grand a year and I still still was broke out of my mind like <laughs> like I made I made no money it, it's still like no fucking money you know so even if you even if you work in the medical industry as like something in the in within like a hospital or a healthcare thing like you're still making fucking chump change so you know now, the thing is, the healthcare providers risk their lives, so it should be reciprocated, right? Like, they are on the, they are on the front of the front lines, and they're, they're out there fighting this disease. They're out there saying that this is the problem, right? They're out there saying, here's, we are going to put, we are going to be out there going face to face with people that have or might have this virus. We don't know because it's asymptomatic, and 
Um, we, we are going to try to help these people. That is our, that is our ethical oath that we have taken. Um, and if we're not going to take measures to protect them, then again, why would they want to be part of that system? Why would they want to be part of a system that asks them to put their lives on the line but doesn't reciprocate it? Isn't that the definition of a toxic relationship? Where you do a bunch of stuff for a person and they do nothing for you in return? Or they continue to demand more? Like, that's a toxic relationship. Now... I know there's some people that are like, well, you can't ask doctors and nurses to just stop working, Chris. That's crazy. That's ridiculous. Well, they already have. There's a bunch of fucking doctor's offices that aren't taking patients, that are specifically only taking, like, emergency cases, you know, so, like, if you have, like, a tummy ache or if you have a mild flu or, or not mild flu, but, like, a, a cold or, you know, a runny nose or if you have headaches or what, what have you, like, okay. Too bad, so sad is kind of the way that they look at it. Um, but they have, they do have an ethical responsibility to do no harm. Uh, that's an ethical responsibility that they have, to do no harm, right? And I know some people will make the argument that if they go on strike that they are going to be doing harm because... They're not going to be at these hospitals. They're not going to be at these clinics taking care of people. Well, one, I, I would I would uh, refer you back a minute ago when I said some of these offices are, like, not taking people. Um, so do no harm but shut down your clinics and don't take any new patients. How is that, how is that not going against do no harm? Uh, but I will make an even stronger argument because uh, when people are dying – uh, we saw a young kid die uh, last week from this virus because he, the kid didn't have health insurance or the parents couldn't afford the test, so he died. Um, I'm not sure about the specifics of his condition. He might have been immunocompromised. He might not have been immunocompromised. We have a crony health care system um, that doesn't care about human life. And they're not taking care of this pandemic. Um, and they're not ready to take care of their doctors and nurses. The longer this thing waits, the longer the system will probably get overwhelmed. So a strike might be the best way to ensure for the long run that they do no harm because the demands of the strikes could be all of the things that that a governing body with, um, with a logical healthcare system and a logical plan to deal with crises like this should have put into place. You can, if, if the healthcare workers go on strike next, uh, that could be the demand that, that they ask for. And I'm sure there would be some fucking right winger and and probably Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and Joe Biden that would come out and make some claim about how dangerous it is and so on and so forth and sure like I said I've already made my cases for why it's not what's more dangerous than a healthcare strike that asks for responsible measures to be taken to deal with a crisis in the log in the most logical and effective manner is a system uh, that has no plans in place, that has no preliminary way to deal with this, other than everybody stay at home and hope your bank accounts don't run dry. <laughs> it's not a fucking plan. It's not a fucking plan. But if the healthcare industry does go, um, does go to, to strike, I think that will light a fire under this entire country's ass because... That's a, I mean, that's a lot of shit, right? Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this a little bit more, but, like, we need ventilators. We need masks. We need all of this equipment that needs to be made. Um, and we have a bunch of 
people that that have the skills and the factories that that know how to do this sort of stuff that aren't doing it uh and there are people that are kind of mobilizing in order to push the corporations in order to do that in order to like create these things in order to manufacture these things um so it, i think it would kind of light the fire and with all of the strikes that we're seeing from essential personnel so far i would not be surprised if we saw some kind of healthcare strike i might be wrong but you know i i i think that we're we're, we're kind of underway because people are getting there's a lot of anxiety and fear and i think this anxiety and fear is now going beyond just general panic um and hyper hyper hyperbole um i lost that word for a minute there but it's going into it's going into some action you know um so so yeah we were kind of i think a lot of people were just kind of waiting to see what would happen with uh with actions like the emergency ubi the direct checks to americans the what we're going to do about this corporate bailout situation that's been given. And, and then once all that stuff played out, we were like, okay, fuck it. Let's just, let's go into action. Let's, let's fucking do some shit. Let's really take, let's really get, a, get this shit underway. And now that's what we're doing. Strike after strike after strike. And we're going to see more of them. And we're going to see more of them too. Hey, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please like and share and make sure that you are subscribed to uh, get alerts whenever I'm dropping new videos. I'm putting out videos uh, pretty much every single day uh, during the the old the old pandemic situation that, that we're all that we're all in together. Uh, so make sure that you guys are, um, you know, like, share, subscribe, make sure that you guys are getting notifications, um, and, uh, and, and keep up to date with all this stuff. Um, uh, what else did I, I don't have any live stand-up comedy dates to let you guys know about. I normally would, but right now, uh, they are all on hiatus. So, um, the best way to, to help is with the with the sharing and making sure that you're subscribed and stuff. But uh, if you have the means to and you can donate, uh, you can donate over at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can make a one-time donation or you can become a sustaining member, uh, whatever you are able to do. But it is, it is absolutely uh, not mandatory it is a uh, extra sense of appreciation uh, for all the content that will be coming out all of my content will be available uh, for free for you guys to view and enjoy uh, make sure you guys are taking care of each other make sure you're being good to each other and uh, till the next one we'll see you on the road thanks guys